Hey, what's going on guys? There's a new stable coin called Ethena or Ethena. There was just an airdrop for it, the ENA token. And that stable coin, a lot of people are drawing comparisons to Luna UST and think that it has the potential to blow up. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that project and how it's different and how it might actually be the same. And we've also got some news to cover before that, like Solana getting dragged right now. Firstly, positive news regarding the state of crypto just in general. This, the state of crypto index, this guy, Darren Matsuoka from, looks like he works with A16Z. Active addresses are up 34% month over month, but if you're just looking at the trend, generally speaking, crypto adoption seems to be really happening. It looks like the top chain by monthly active addresses is Solana. And you do just wonder if a lot of that is related to bots. But then again, that could be said for probably every single crypto chain. Mobile wallet users are starting to trend up, which is pretty interesting. 2021 had a real spike and then it really flatlined. And one project that I cover a lot on this channel is Radix. And their wallet is a mobile first experience because that's where they see crypto heading. So not that this is driven by Radix by any means, but it is good to see the trend uh, going up. I personally... I'm not a big, you know, I don't do crypto on my phone very much. I keep it to the PC, but we're going to have to see where things go. And DEX volume is obviously skyrocketing. It says here, low transaction fees like Base and Solana are leading the charge. But, you know, me as a big fan of ThorChain and DEXs over centralized exchanges, I love seeing that this metric is trending up. Although if you were to go look at decentralized exchange versus centralized exchange volume, as a ratio, decentralized exchange volume is actually dropping, which is not good. Why is Solana getting dragged right now? Apparently, Dune Analytics data shows that on April 4th, just over 75% of all non-vote Solana transactions failed, the highest failure rate on record. But some are speculating that it is just bot spam. The failure rate isn't usually a big problem for users because your wallet will simulate the transaction and let you know that it will not work beforehand anyway, which might be part of where people are thinking that the user experience is starting to not be as good as this guy said here. As much as I, as much as I think that Soul is the chain for retail, the cycle, the experience is effing brutal lately. Because even if it simulates a transaction and then it's going to fail and it'll let you know, it would be annoying to have to wait or to have to try to re-push your transactions through. Although probably not that big of a deal. They say about 95% of that entire chart is just bots failing arbitrage attempts. In terms of a fix for this, Tolly, the CEO of Solana said, dealing with congestion bugs sucks so much more than total liveness failure because Solana has just halted. I think that's what he's referring to. The latter is one and done. Bug is identified and patched and the chain continues. The former, what we're talking about here with the spam, has to go through the full release and test pipeline. Shipping fast is impossible. So how long might it take for a fix for some of the spam and the congestion? Not sure. But as Juan pointed out, while everyone is dumping on Solana, I thought I'd point out that they are being stress tested with an incredible amount of transaction volume that any blockchain would be glad to have. And uh, this is actually very true. I would love for my favorite layer one to get so much transaction volume that it starts to put things under pressure and hopefully they can just pass that with flying colors. The Bitcoin halving is coming up very shortly. I think it's supposed to be 419, which is exactly two weeks from right now. And there's a lot of speculation of if the rewards, the block rewards are going to be cut in half, are the miners going to be profitable? Could we see a lot of mining companies go out of business and maybe have to sell to some of the bigger mining companies, which might centralize some of the hash power. The CEO of Acheron Trading says, in dollar terms, it's not obvious that miners will be worse off after the halving, quite the opposite. The decrease in mining awards is going to be compensated by an increase in network fees. And I'm assuming the increased network fees would come from actual usage and not some change or fork to the Bitcoin software. And this is where you're starting to see people having doubts about Bitcoin. If I'm supposed to be able to save in Bitcoin and the transaction fees are $20 and I can only save $50 every paycheck or so, then I don't want to have to pay 50% of that entire savings in Bitcoin. So it's going to limit 
the amount of people that will be able to self-custody Bitcoin. Still time to figure that out, I suppose. Ripple is introducing a stable coin, but the community is divided over it. And I thought this was a pretty interesting take here. This Bill Morgan guy, he says, you say we'll use the new stable coin together with XRP and crypto enabled payments. This person assumed that XRP was sufficient of itself as a bridge in payments. So how are they used together or why do they need to be used together? Which is a pretty good point. I think a lot of people were thinking that XRP, if you have $100 and you want to settle $100 somewhere else, then you would just swap that into XRP, use the network, and then you could just turn it into whatever you want on the other end of that, I'm guessing. Because they say here, XRP used as a bridge. But now if you've got a separate stable coin on the Ripple network that is just being transferred and there's no need for the XRP token, then what is the utility of the XRP token? So if there's anybody out there from the XRP army that can explain the utility of XRP itself in the network, uh, please drop a comment. Help us out. That'd be awesome. Cardano's price has been trending down over the last month in risk of falling out of the top 10 from Ton and Avalanche, which are chasing it. If you're a true crypto punk, you don't care about this so much, but Grayscale drops Cardano from its digital large cap fund. The company noted the cash proceeds from ADA were used to purchase other assets in the fund in proportion to their respective weightings. So they just liquidated their Cardano and then split that up into what they were already holding. Thing is, they did not say why they eliminated Cardano from this fund. They also rebalanced a smart contract platform fund after dropping Atom. Notably, Cardano remains part of this fund though. Now into the main topic of this video, this Athena Labs enabling the internet bond. They launched a stablecoin called USDE, which is currently over on DeFi Llama, ranked fifth. It's got just over two billion in market cap. And this happened really, really fast to my understanding. Athena is like brand new. So is this gonna be like Yuluna UST and is this going to explode in the future? I think that's what we wanna know. A lot of people invested in the UST stablecoin because stablecoin, they thought it was going to be safe. They didn't think that, oh, that the entire Terra chain was gonna collapse and that the entire Anchor protocol was gonna go to zero. One thing that Luna and the Anchor protocol was doing back in the day, right before it collapsed, is they were using Bitcoin as a backing asset, which is what Athena looks like they are be gonna be doing now. They say this is a crucial unlock which will enable USDE to scale significant, significantly from the current 2 billion supply. With Luna UST, Luna was supposed to be the absorber of the price fluctuations in UST, if that's a fair explanation. So as UST would depeg, you were able to arbitrage with Luna. This is completely different though. Athena's strategy involves generating yields by shorting futures over cryptocurrencies of, of cryptocurrencies such as ETH and now Bitcoin. By pocketing funding rates from these shorts, Athena has boasted an APY of 37% for its users. Unlike Anchor, 37% is not a chosen number. That is just the last seven days of APY. That's just what it would be. They operate a delta neutral strategy. So what they do is by holding, and this is an example with Bitcoin, by holding Bitcoin spot and shorting Bitcoin perpetual futures contracts simultaneously, Athena aims to balance any losses from Bitcoin's price fluctuations with gains from short positions, ensuring USDE's value remains relatively stable. Completely different than Luna UST. Luna UST wasn't doing anything like this to my understanding. Two key aspects of this stablecoin. Athena, like other synthetic stablecoins, proposes an attractive ideology, a stablecoin without USD reserves. Because USD reserves, they have to be held in a bank that can be frozen by regulators, that kind of thing, which is just a risk. But then you've got this here, the revelation that Athena stores funds in custodial wallets, necessitating KYC processes and vulnerable to regulatory actions introduces a layer of concern. This scenario echoes the failures of Celsius and BlockFi, where the lack of real-time insights in reserve assets and hedging strategies led to significant issues. Not only does it look like the funds can be frozen, just like USDT, USDC reasons we don't like those, but it also could have insolvency risks like Celsius and BlockFi, according to this article. 
It does look very simple to use though. If you go over to their platform, you can just swap USDT into USDE and then you would stake that similar to Anchor Protocol, stake the USDE and get S USDE and you'll be making 37.1%. This almost seems like a no brainer at this point, but again, what are the risks involved here? If you're more of a visual person, this graph might help. So you've got the USDE yield here. This is just an example of 10%. You got that from collateral, from staking yield. So if you provide Ethereum, they are going to liquid stake that and they're gonna be earning some yield. Some of that, I believe they're gonna keep for operations, I would imagine. And then you've got this derivative, 1X short futures. And this is where they're earning funding rate arbitrage to my understanding. I did search the docs for the ENA token, its governance token, to see where it might be used in the protocol similar to Luna. Does it absorb any of the volatility of the stablecoin or anything like that? But I could not find any mention of the ENA token, so it's completely separate based on what I could find, which makes it different than Luna for sure. The more stablecoin experiments we get, the better in my opinion, but this one, it, I don't see it as that much different than USDC, USDT, in the fact that if it's regulated and it can be frozen on chain, then it's not something we inevitably want in the long run. And it's probably not private. There's probably no privacy features either. So what do you guys think the risks of this one? With Luna UST, when Luna went down, it just brought down Luna. In this example, it's using a lot of Ethereum. Ethereum's got a massive market cap though already. So at what market cap would this have to get to to where if it did collapse, it would significantly hurt Ethereum and the rest of the market? Or maybe it doesn't implode at all and it just keeps on riding to Valhalla and that would be awesome too. I hope you got some value out of this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.